Hello everyone and welcome in Bentonovo headquarters here in Milan. Right now we have entered the last week of the Kickstarter campaign for Stalingrad Inferno on the Volga and as you can see we are ready to make the Christmas party here and thank you everybody for supporting the game campaign so far and today I would like to go a bit into the game and show you a bit more about how the game works while playing the Germans versus the Soviet artificial intelligence. So let me just start the game and show you a bit more of the map and the positions held by the Germans when the game starts. As you can see, the Germans control one hexagon in the center of the board and a couple of hexagons on the left side of the board because this game starts on August 23, so exactly when the battle for the city started. And the first thing I have to do as the German player now is take my card deck and after having it shuffled and take three cards. These three cards will be immediately in play so I can... Oh, Richthofen, that's fantastic. Pioneer and Stuka, very good. So while this is a leader and this is a portrait card, it will be in play for the whole game. Just consider, yes, this is a prototype map, so the art of the map is not finished yet because we are drawing each building one by one and this is going to take a lot of time. And the card as well, as you can see, they are prototype cards and they are sleeved to protect them. As I was saying, this is Richthofen and once drawn, it will he will, re he will remain in playing for the remainder of the match. While those two cards are support cards, you, you know because they have panorama card, and I can use them one each. After that, they are spent. So let's move on the northern side of the city where I have most of my forces ready to hit. And the first thing I will do is I have to, to choose between five different options. Uh, let's go straight into the game. So I want to make a hasty attack. A hasty attack is a short move starting from a X which is not adjacent to any Soviet uh, controlled hexes and ending into a hex which is adjacent to a Soviet controlled hexes. This automatically generates a battle and in this battle the German player cannot play any card. While the Soviet player must play a card if it has, but when the game starts the Soviets have no game because the card deck is fully available here. So let's go directly into the battle for showdown. Oh, I'm I'm quite lucky because it is basically a seven to one match, and we both roll simultaneously. So we roll seven dice for the Germans. Sorry, let me roll them in front of the camera. I need, I need to roll one more. Oh, oh, I made a mistake, pardon me, pardon me. I should know this because I'm the game designer. <laughs> so, first of all, uh, let's have a look at the dot. It is correct that we have seven dots, but four of them are white, so they hit, they have double fire and they hit at four, sorry, at five and six. And the other three, so I have one hit only here, and the other three, rolls at 4, 5 and 6 because those are uh, red. Uh, 
So totally I have score 1-8, which is enough to eliminate the Soviets. But first of all, let me roll for the Soviets because the, the combat is simultaneous. So they roll a 1, nothing. So the Soviet unit is eliminated and I must enter the vacated X with at least one unit. But in this case, I'm going to move with them all. Now my turn is gone and the Soviet unit a tank is eliminated and it goes directly into the Soviet spawn pool there face down now it is the Soviet turn uh, how the artificial intelligence works this is probably the most complicated thing to understand about the game but I will make it very easy so first of all the, the Soviet player has two options. He can make a move or make a spawn. In this case, he has to calculate the number of controlled spawn hexes, and they have six because they have six at the beginning and they are marked with vic red victory flags, which basically represent the tractor factory, the docks, and the uh, the joining with the surrounding Soviet armies and then they have to count <clears throat> the number of top stacked hexes in these cases as the top stacked hex is the one which contains one block I would say that they have 22 as 22 is above 6 they will make a spawn action in other case, instead, they will move the stack. So, making a spawn action for the Soviets means rolling one die for each spawn X. Sorry, means drawing a number of, deploying a number of reinforcements indicated in each spawn axis. So, for example, in this one, the Soviets will draw one tank and one infantry as you can see i'm not watching at the units because otherwise <laughs> it would be very easy to win i will deploy a tank here because of the tank symbol so i randomly draw a tank and at, a, at random strength an infantry here as well two more infantry here one infantry here one infantry and one tank on the corner here so let's have a look at the next German move the next German move will be very very easy for me because I want to call for reinforcements when the German player calls for reinforcements, he automatically drew a card and put it as available in his deck. It is a pioneer again. And then he rolls six dice and deploy each of these dice over the German reinforcement pool. So now I'm going to move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, oh, two on the two column. Then I have a three on the first one. Then I have a four on the first one. And I have two fives. So, there. That means that those six units will arrive as reinforcements. Let's have a look at them. Because as you can see, I have different colors. And I have some blue, some yellow, and some white. So, very easy. The blue ones must be deployed in this X. They represent four Panzer Army units joining the fighting. While yellow units must be deployed either here or here. Maximum stacking is four. And then a white unit. So I can deploy this one wherever I like except that I cannot overstock. So let me add this weak unit to the four Panzer Army units there. 
and my move is completed. Now it is up to the Soviet artificial intelligence to make the play. So again, they have to count the number of victory areas, victory hexes, six, the number of top stacked hexes. In this case, as you can see, they have two, because I have those two hexes with three blocks each. As two is not above six, they will not make a spawn action, they will make a move action. And they will roll one die for each of those two axes, starting from the lowest number. So this one first, and that's a three, I deploy it here. And a die for the other one, which is a six. So I start to resolve the lowest die roll first. So this one, which is a three. And as you check the Soviet compass there, that tree means that one unit must move in this direction. Which one? The closest to the border. What about the other one? It's a six. As you can see, this unit cannot go there because there is no map there. And each time the Soviet artificial intelligence is called to make a move which cannot make, then it automatically draws a card and adds it to the Soviet card deck here close to Chuikov. But this card is not in play. So the Soviet move is completed. Let me show you another nice move I want to make now. I want to make with the Germans a deliberate attack. So I want to attack without moving with this stack into this stack. First of all, I have the option to add the card. As I have Richthofen, I want to use it and I will play the Stuka. The Stuka will be doubled by Richthofen. As you know already, each time there is a combat, the Soviet is forced to play his card. And then we make showdown. Oh! Hidden T34. So, let's make showdown. And let's resolve the cards. The Soviet card must be resolved always first. So, as they have a hidden T34, Tamled Maskirovska, they randomly add a T34 from the reinforcement pool and then they show it. The Soviet card is played and it is removed from play. What about my card? Now it's time to play my card and as this is a Stuka, as you can see I have to roll five dice and it is red so I will be hitting at four, five and six but I will this number will be doubled because of Richthofen. So I will roll 10. So the first five are one hit and the other five are two hit. So totally three hits. Hits are applied by the German players to the Soviets starting from the strongest unit. So one hit, the second and then the third. How to apply the third? It is always to the German choice when two Soviet units have the same strength. So in this case I will apply the heat to the, to the Soviet tanks and the Soviet tanks is eliminated, it goes back into the reinforcement pool. The Stuka has been played, so it is discarded. Let's see the close or ground combat. It is simultaneously, so one die for the Soviets, black die, so they need the six to make a hit, that's nothing, and I have Eight dice, so <laughs> this time I will make it right. No, sorry, I have nine dice, so it is two dice to red, hitting at four, five, and six, nothing, and then I have seven hitting at five and six, nothing. The last ones, okay, I made one hit. The Soviet unit is eliminated, is an infantry, and it goes back into the infantry uh, pool. 
and at least one of my unit must advance into the vacated X. Uh, just to have a look, now it is the Soviet turn. As you can see, the number of top stacked hexes is one because I have one X with three blocks in. So, as this number is below the number of control, victory, or spawn hex, the Soviet artificial intelligence, instead of making a spawn, will roll one die for that X. The die roll is a three, so one of those units there in the corner must move accordingly, but again, as there is no map there, they will draw a card. What happens when the Soviet deck is finished? <laughs> That's a bad thing, because at that time the game is over and Operation Uranus is launched, so it is a German defeat. Otherwise, if the Germans can seize all the six uh, red Soviet victory flags or eliminate all the Soviet units from the board, that's a German victory. So, we have enjoyed this game a lot so far, even by playing it in solitaire or one by one or in the cooperative game with two German players sharing the 6th army, the yellow units, and the 4th panzer army, the blue units, or even in the competitive and cooperative version in which two German players face a Soviet player. This is an amazing game with several difficulty levels and several optional rules you can add to your gaming sessions and it has a very high replay value. So, finally, let me tell you the last thing. Enjoy the campaign, enjoy your Christmas and let's see you next year. Thank you.